What's up guys? Conrad here with another video and today we're gonna do things a little bit differently. As you can see, the aesthetic has now changed. We're gonna do things more in a podcast-like style. And this is my first time doing this, so do forgive me if I'm a bit rusty. I'm gonna make loads of mistakes. There are gonna be no edits. I'm gonna go straight from the beginning to the end with no cuts. You might hear weird noises that I make and because you know the microphone picks it all up and you might hear planes going by so do bear with that and also i have all my notes on my laptop so i don't have to memorize paragraphs and paragraphs i can just you know look at it read it and also talk to you guys so the topic of discussion is the notion of being seduced by materialism now have you ever been seduced by materialism? Because I know I have. I think we all have in some form or another. And it's like a cunning seductress that lures you into its web. And, and it doesn't let go until you indulge in it. It's a craving that must be satisfied. And once you've achieved it, well, you feel like you need it again. So here's the, here's the Google definition of what materialism is. It's the tendency to consider material possessions and physical comfort as more important than spiritual values. So basically, we are looking to attain excitement and feelings of happiness from things that are outside ourselves, instead of looking for contentment from within. Now, you know, yeah, I know this sounds a bit hippy-dippy right now, but bear with me. So, the idea of materialism seems to have various negative connotations. And now, is it a bad thing overall? Uh, well, not necessarily. I I'd say it's something you want to be aware of and make sure you're not overindulging in, as there's a possibility of seeing zero dollars in your account if you're not careful. However, if materialistic people are benefiting from a service that you provide, well, that's a win. That's a win on your part. So it's better to use materialism to your advantage and not let it run you. So there are times when saving money gets a little bit tedious. Like you feel like splashing out a bit on something nice because you're bored. You tell yourself, well, why not? You deserve it. At least that's what you tell yourself. You're not satisfied with what you have already because you feel you need something more, something fresh, something new. And is it just a phase or is it a way of life? Well, personally, I hope it's just a phase. And I'm, I'm aware I may sound like a bit of a hypocrite because I'm often talking about fashion brands on this channel. Now, I've a, I have a passion for fashion <laughs> However, I like to see myself more as a completionist rather than a minimalist. So someone who has a respectable wardrobe and ideally doesn't feel the need to constantly add new garments to the collection just because I don't have a particular garment of a certain color or material. Now, is it possible to ever feel complete in regards to materialism? I'm not sure. Because I think it's a mental game we play with ourselves. It's a mentality that can be hard to get out of. These things only really become a detriment to your life when they consume you and thus have a negative effect on your finances. Now, when you develop a fondness for the finer things in life, it becomes the new standards. Now, let's say you're able to have everything you want. You can get the most expensive Rolex, but then you just end up wearing a Casio just because, well, you can wear anything you want, so why not just put something normal and convenient? You could wear a sweater from Gucci, but you just stick, you know, you stick with something that's from The Gap or Primark because maybe it's more comfortable. And the fact that you're wearing something normal kind of amuses you. Because you could wear that Gucci or Louis Vuitton, whatever, but comfort might be more important at this very moment. Now, I don't always feel like showing off my best attire every day, 
especially if I'm going out to the grocery store, because after all, who am I trying to impress? Of course, I wouldn't deliberately dress ugly, but trying to uphold a certain image becomes less important, especially if you're just you know, going about your day, doing regular things. So let's say you go into a nice clothes store and you see a sexy jacket and you think, hmm, that's, that looks pretty nice. I think I'll try it on. And you look at yourself in the mirror in this jacket and you can, you know, you can see yourself wearing this. It's like, oh, this is just made just for you. Like, this jacket is literally stroking my ego. You check the price tag. And it's like, damn, it is a bit pricey. I'm not sure if it would be in my best interest to buy this. It's not like a really good financial decision. But I really want it, though. Ugh. It feels like a kind of an annoyance, you know, but but I'm, cause I'm also trying to save up and be more disciplined. It's like, ah, screw it. Okay, let's go for it anyway. It's it's Christmas, you know, at least that's what you tell yourself. At least it will make me happy. But the thing is, you got to realize it's only temporary. It's It's almost like, it's almost like having a strong lust for someone. But in this case, it's something. And if only I can just get this thing, because I really want it. you got to be able to control this impulse, especially if it's out of your financial league, for a lack of a better expression. But hey, if it's not, then by all means, enjoy yourself. See, sometimes I see an item I'm curious to try on, and I hope that I don't like it. I hope it doesn't suit me. Why? Because I want to save money. And when I do find out that actually this jacket kind of sucks, then I I feel a sense of relief. So sometimes it's less so about buying things in order to, to be more attractive, but it's more about the way it makes you feel. The endorphins it gives you. Nice clothes give you an air of confidence. Nothing wrong with that. But after a while... It becomes a part of you. You could be wearing a cheaper version of that sweater and your happiness level doesn't change either way. So here's the issue. Materialism is generally a cup that can never be filled. The wardrobe never feels complete until you, well, until you purchase that item that's in a different colour or a style, a material that you don't have. You're coming from a place of lack and need. Your personal consumerist tendencies do not end until you decide. But let's face it, most people can't really do this. And I'm not saying to disregard your appearance and dress poorly just for the sake of fighting against materialism. But, um, but there needs to be a balance. And if your attire is full of designer labels and logos here and there, then, then you're literally becoming a walking advertisement and the product of consumerism. Now, it takes a certain kind of person to be able to resist those material temptations. And that is someone who is either not in an environment where consumerism and materialism is part of the culture, or is someone who is spiritually and philosophically more inclined to seek deeper meaning in life and realize what is underneath the surface of what he perceives with his eyes within the physical world. This person starts to realize that all this materialism It's a bit of a a facade and, you know, a silly distraction from what's really important. Now, I, I understand that materialism and consumerism is the catalyst for a huge part of economic growth in Western civilization. It drives profits and, um, and it's, you know, it's great for big businesses and helps society function, you could say. However, if it's nothing to do with you, uh, 
then try to live, or if it's nothing to do with your business specifically, then you need to try and live more autonomously and independently of all that noise, shall we say. Be your own person, says the guy who often talks about fashion brands. What can I say? Now, there is something to be said about great marketing, as it can be really captivating, especially if your favorite celebrity happens to wear a particular brand. And then you might feel the need to emulate that look so you can be just as cool as that guy in the movie, music video or advert or whatever. Now, will it work? Will it make you as cool as that guy? Uh, maybe not in the same way you're hoping. Wearing that nice garment can make a change in the way you carry yourself. But other people maybe won't care anywhere near as much as you do about those things. Because they're worrying about themselves, let's be honest. Now, they, they may notice like your nice watch or they might compliment your outfit. But that's about it. It's not something you should derive your self-esteem from. Now, does flexing give you any real fulfill fulfillment? Well, it nourishes your narcissism and appeals your, to your ego, and that's about it. It's all vanity and wanting to look like you're part of a certain lifestyle or community. Am I a victim of this? Well, perhaps sometimes. I'm not yet completely above it all. But I'll do my best as it's a work in progress. Now... It sometimes makes you wonder, did I ever really need any of these things? Did these things change anything about my situation in a big way or help me grow as a person? Or maybe a little bit, but only superficially. For example, I would wear a special and pricier shirt just a few times a year, just, be, you know, as there weren't that many suitable occasions for this nice shirt. And so I placed a higher importance on that shirt at the time I purchased it. Now, of course, the pro proclivity for materialism not only consists of nice clothes, shoes, fragrances or whatnot, but it can also extend to a higher level, such as with cars, expensive jewellery, watches, furniture, art, real estate, yachts. At a certain income bracket, the toys become more expensive and more exclusive, and there are no limits to, as to how far you can go. And then you start seeing these things more as investments, or maybe something you could potentially sell later, which can be a good move. Now, you might start developing a taste for fine art, even though previously you had no interest in it whatsoever. Now, when you're at this stage, it's not about the fact that you don't have this particular shade of polo shirt, but it's more so whether the grass is greener on your lawn than the grass on your neighbor's lawn, or whether the color of your Bugatti is nicer than the color of the other guy's Bugatti. All right. Now, scarcity is a contributing factor, making you feel like you need to buy something right now. It's something, if something is a limited edition or is just about to be sold out, it's on sale, and this is your last chance to get this item, that's when it really gets to you. If this sort of scenario often manipulates your thoughts and emotions, then it may be time to practice discipline and contentment and not let yourself become consumed by consumerism. you got to realize that some of these expensive luxury items that you fawn over were cheaply made in third world countries. However, you can never go wrong with garments that were made in Italy. But I understand a lot of us sartorial enthusiasts like to have a nice collection of clothes which consists of a variety of suits, shirts and jackets for different and specific occasions. Obviously, some material things are necessary and important to have, so I'm not saying that we should live like cavemen. Now, there comes a point when a passion for fashion becomes an obsession 
then maybe it develops into an addiction. And materialists become very focused on the details, and you could say they are somewhat like perfectionists. It starts off by wanting to complete the wardrobe, but then it doesn't really end. There's always something new to get, or something needs tweaking. Now, does it make you happy? Well, well, when getting it in the moment, something new, there is a level of excitement for sure, but then it does wear off eventually. And it's never finished, never complete. Now, just because someone or something is beautiful doesn't mean you're entitled to it. It kind of sucks, I know. You're still going to be the same person before and after you pursue the object of your desire, in most cases. Sure, it may bring you some excitement, but it's always temporary. You eventually revert to feeling exactly the way you did before that attractive item caught your eye, and before you attained it. It's that hunger, that feeling of needing, that is the annoying part. Now, the more expensive the thing, the better it is, right? Well, not necessarily. As it happens, it's more of a psychological thing. Sometimes something has a perceived value just because it's a certain, um, because it's priced at a certain amount. So something has a perceived value just because it's priced at a certain amount or is associated with a particular brand. Sometimes it's just the logo and that makes all the difference. Now, once you have it all, it means nothing. It's cool, but now it's just normal, the new normal. And it makes you think, maybe I would have been fine without all these things all along, as I feel I've just the same as I did before I made the effort to purchase all these things. But oh wait, now I desire something else. And so the cycle continues. Now, don't get me wrong. It's nice to have nice things. But in the grand scheme of things, that's all it is. It's nice. Have I fully absorbed this concept? Well, not to the extent of being totally free from it. The things you feel you want or need, you probably never needed in the first place. You know, unless it's food, water or shelter. And then you may start to think on a deeper level, like surely there must be more to life than just this, right? That's the bigger question that is perhaps beyond the scope of this video. The cycle of consumerism and the effects of materialism on your mind, well, that is the cycle of consumerism. Try and see beyond all of that. Focus on the things that really matter. Sure, work on your image. Give yourself a chance to present yourself in the best way. But don't fall for the pitfalls and the trappings of being a consumerist unless your intention is to make it part of your identity for monetary reasons. It's like a drug, essentially. Perhaps that's the image you want to convey on social media and to the world. However, the older I get, the less I want to become... Well, the less I want to do that because my pri pri priorities start to change. Now, we only have a finite amount of time in this world. So right now, for me, it's more about experiences rather than what I own. Maybe it was a phase I had to go through in order to arrive at this realization. But companies are happy to take my money. Salesmen are happy to persuade me to and make me feel I need to buy a particular product from their stores. But there are times where you need to have more discernment. You probably heard all of this before in some form or another. Yes, it may sound a little bit pretentious, but it's important to remind ourselves that we ideally should not be a slave to our desires. I say ideally because none of us are perfect and no one said this was going to be easy. 
And so that's my overly philosophical perspective on materialism. But anyway, that's all I got to say on that topic. Hopefully you found this video somewhat interesting. And with that being said, thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. And I'll see you guys next time.